Marty a hole for telling my grandchildren's father I don't owe his other children anything? I lost my youngest daughter Joy a decade ago. She left behind her husband and two children who are now 15 and 16 years old. My daughter was very close to her dad and me, and when she was at her sickest, she begged us to stay in the kids' lives and make sure they always knew she loved them and that we were her family just as much. She mentioned how worried she was that her husband would encourage them to forget her and would try to replace her for them with a new woman. She asked that we leave anything we might have left her to her children. We assured her we would never let the relationship end and that we would make sure they had a good life and would remember her always. Eight months after she died, her husband moved his now wife into their home. She had a baby with someone else and was also expecting a baby with someone. At that point, he did attempt to make it a package deal, where we could not see our grandchildren without treating his now stepchildren as our grandchildren, and that we were to treat all future children of his the same. Otherwise, we would need to be cut out to give our grandchildren the chance to form the new family bonds without interference from us that they deserved a chance to have another mother and only see the new children as true siblings. Their lawyer told them we would have a case to get grandparents' visitation. We also sought on if we were denied access, if we could obtain that, and we were told given our close relationship with the children that it would be easy to get access through the courts. This led to us getting minimal access, but it was all that was needed because our grandchildren were glad to see us and their aunts and uncles and cousins. In the last few years, my former son-in-law has found himself estranged from his own family, and his wife's family are also no longer in the picture, and has six children not counting my grandkids in his home, with no family or support outside of him and his wife. Now that my grandchildren are teenagers, they seek to spend more time with us, and their lives have benefited from it. We admittedly spoil them more than some would like because of the circumstances, but they are wonderful children. Their father confronted me recently about his other children and how they have no extended family and are suffering seeing their siblings being spoiled. He also said we had already come between our grandchildren and their siblings because they are not close and have never asked for their siblings to be part of the extended family they have. He told me I owe it to his children to step in and give them love and some of the same spoiling. I told him I did not owe his children anything and that I would never forgive him for what he attempted to do before. He told me I was cold-hearted and callous. Part of me wonders if he's right because the children are innocent. And even though I have never considered them family, they are still young. And nothing to do with my former son-in-law's actions. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Who the heck moves in their girlfriend eight months after their wife dies? I feel bad for the other kids because it sounds like their parents are awful. But that's not your problem. I have heard so many depressing stories about guys doing exactly this today. WTF. And here you see one of the few situations in which grandparents' rights actually matter. And to boot, one baby and a pregnant with another baby that wasn't his. Like what? He either really liked this chick or he was desperate to have a woman in the house to do everything for him. Not the a-hole. He never should have tried to force his kids on you. It's not your fault. All the rest of the family is estranged from them. It's great you guys are willing to do so much for your grandchildren and being so supportive for them. We love them and want the best for them. I'm just glad they stayed close to us despite all this. Former son-in-law's drowning because has made some very bad decisions. Make sure you reserve resources to ensure that he doesn't drag down your grandchildren with him. In particular, to assist them in getting into some kind of college or post-high school training if your resources stretch that far. As soon as they turn 18, see if you can help them get out of that household. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister she's the reason our parents are divorcing? About a month ago, my 24 male parents, 55 female and 57 male, announced they were getting divorced. This has been quite a shock to most people, as they seem to be having no issues out of the ordinary. However, I have been the one privy to the information of why they are divorcing. It's because of my sister Anne, 26 female. Anne is a deadbeat. She has never worked more than 14 hours a week since getting expelled from college for multiple acts of cheating and code of conduct violations five years ago. All she does is sit at home most days watching TV or going over to her loser boyfriend's house to get high. She feels no need to support herself and expects my parents to carry her through life. She's been in therapy since she was 14 but cannot keep one for more than a year because she gets dropped as a client due to her lying and inability to show up to appointments. 
My parents have spent over a decade trying to get some mental issue pinned down for Anne, and all they've gotten is she's just a lazy narcissist. Last year, my mom decided enough was enough and planned to kick Anne to the curb and wash her hands off her. Dad disagreed, and in the end, the two's marriage got torn apart. I know, because both have come to me basically admitting that if Anne was not a factor, divorce would not even be a consideration. I don't get along with Anne for a variety of reasons. She has always been a bully and owes me a large sum of money at the moment. The thing that boils my blood though is that she's oblivious to the situation between our parents or just doesn't care. She had a literal tantrum when the possibility of the house being sold came up because she didn't want to have to move to an apartment with my dad. Then last night, I found myself at my parents' house and had the misfortune of talking to Anne. Anne mentioned that she's getting really sick of mom's melodramatic antics and not just leaving the house to her and my dad. Something struck me at that moment, and I just asked Anne if she really does not care that she's such a selfish, garbage, waste of space human that just driven her parents to get a divorce. I elaborated and told her the full truth that she is in fact the only reason they're getting a divorce, because mom has finally realized that there is no hope Anne will ever grow up. The fallout this caused was massive. Anne acted as if I sold her out to the Romans, and my parents argued between she deserves to know and we told you that in confidence. Because Anne cannot keep her mouth shut either, the entire extended family has begun to hear too. So, I want to know before opinion starts forming outside the inner circle if I'm the a-hole here. Nope, not the a-hole. Sorry, some tough love is needed for Anne. Doubt she's gonna get her act together but she needed to hear it. Not everything is about her. Hopefully, she can get her act together and be a contributing member of society. And your parents can get back together with some therapy. The divorce is about her, though. It's really not, though. It's the fact that the father chose his daughter over his wife. The real issue is that the father chose his child over his wife, and his wife is not his first priority. This is just a nail in the coffin for her, and she's finally decided to leave after years of having her feelings be dismissed by him. This happens all the time, but usually it's the woman who chooses her children over a man. Not the a-hole. Daddy's girl needs to have a reality check. Correct. And let's be honest here. The sister isn't the reason they are getting divorced. It's the father's coddling and inability to hold her accountable whilst the mother has had enough. If dad grew a pair and supported his wife, they probably wouldn't be divorcing. Everyone sucks here. Honestly, my initial judgment was you already a-hole. But the more I read, the more it was just... eek. I have slight reservations because therapy started quite young. Did anything ever happen? Or she exhibited behaviors they knew needed help? Either way, she appears to be able to grasp the concept of reality, has a relationship with someone, and can fend for herself when needed. She's just a nahole. She's always had anger issues ever since I could remember. I don't know slash remember the exact reason why she started at 14, but I want to say it was a recommendation after Anne started fighting at school. I know her second bout with therapy at 16 started because of self-harm threats. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not defending my sister after my husband said, good luck, you'll need it marrying her, to her fiancé? My husband used to get along with my family until my sister falsely accused him of cheating on me. He understandably doesn't like her anymore, but is usually civil towards her. My sister recently announced her engagement, and while everybody congratulated her, my husband turned to her fiancé and said, Good luck, you'll need it marrying her. I was shocked he would say something like that, especially in front of my parents. But I never said anything as I didn't want to fight with him in front of everybody. My sister kept giving me a look like she expected me to say something, and when I didn't, she yelled at him herself. I made us leave because I could see us being there wasn't helping the situation. My sister has been texting me about what happened, mostly to take digs at my husband. She gets angry every time I ask her to stop and thinks I'm siding with him when he was in the wrong. Things have gotten worse after I told her I wouldn't be going wedding dress shopping with her as she's blaming my husband for that too. She sent him some messages directly and he fanned the flames by saying he wouldn't let me go and she would be lucky if we even attend a wedding. I've spoken to my husband and asked him to stop making things worse. He has agreed to stop responding to her, but she wants me to make him apologize and to agree to visit when she wants to go wedding dress shopping to prove I'm not siding with him, which I cannot do. Am I the a-hole? There are two situations here. The sister accused her husband of cheating on you in a malicious or very public way that created a lot of burned bridges. 
in which case, you should probably be defending your husband here, or at least keeping him away from events with somebody he justifiably hates. The sister accused her husband of cheating privately, out of genuine concern or due to a misunderstanding, in which case him being frosty is reasonable. But he absolutely shouldn't be making a public scene about it if he's still agreeing to actually meet up with or hang out with your sister. Either way, multiple people involved are behaving badly, yourself in all situations, so this is a clear everyone sucks here. You also cannot play peacekeeper without telling your sister clearly, my husband will never want anything to do with you due to the cheating accusation, and that is not a problem you can solve. So, my sister was staying with us for a while, and she thought it was weird that he wasn't home that often, and that he was always on his phone or on his laptop, so she was convinced he was cheating. I told her repeatedly that he wasn't and that he was working, but she wouldn't let it go. She tried to prove it by taking pictures of him with slash kissing his female friend's cheek, but I told her they didn't prove anything. She thought I was in denial, so she sent them to our family because she thought they would talk sense into me, but it's just caused unnecessary drama. Did she sincerely apologize to your husband? If not, then it's understandable that he's still upset. She's never apologized to him directly. Well then, he doesn't owe her an apology. If she had apologized and he accepted her apology, then I might call his comment a-hole territory. But since she didn't even apologize to him for trying to break up your marriage, cause that's what she tried to do, then she got what she deserves. Not a-hole for not defending her against her husband, but softy or the a-hole for not standing up for him when she complained. Your new mantra should be, you reap what you sow. Play it on repeat when she complains. Wow, your sister is a special kind of doodlebug. It all sounds so delightful. The holidays must be so fun. I don't think you're an a-hole. I think your sister likes to stir the pot. And your husband is past done with her crap. At least your husband has agreed to disengage. How much or how little you want to be involved in the planning of your sister's nuptials is up to you. Not your sister, not your husband, you. Last story. Am I the a-hole for how I handled my brother's girlfriend trying to force me to babysit? I am 30 female. I have a brother, Matt, 35, who has been with his girlfriend, Lexi, 33, for two years. Lexi has a daughter, Bella, 5, and I have a daughter who is 3 years old. We all live in the same city, but Matt and Lexi live in suburbs, and I live in a city center, so about 45 minutes away. While I see Matt on average every three weeks, I only see Lexi and Bella every two slash three months at my parents' house or for occasions slash gatherings. Two days ago, I got a text from Lexi asking me to babysit Bella on Wednesday because she would not be at school due to teachers being on strike. She said she forgot about the strike and had not taken the day off work and had also made social plans for after her shift ended. I said no to babysitting and thought that was that. Then yesterday around lunchtime, I was having a skin treatment when one of my cleaners came to tell me that Lexi had dropped off Bella. The cleaner had answered the door and Lexi had said she had arranged to leave Bella with us. And a cleaner was unaware this wasn't a plan and let her in, and Lexi then left. I was livid. I immediately called Lexi, and after four declined calls and voicemails, I sent her a text saying if she didn't return for her daughter within 15 minutes, I was going to call the police to say she had abandoned her child. I find my husband to tell him what is going on, and he calls Matt and tells him to sort this out. A few minutes after speaking to Matt, Lexi appears. She marched straight into the den where Bella is watching TV, saying how evil we were for telling Matt and threatening to call the police. I tried to get her to come and speak in the study so Bella couldn't hear, but she just kept going on. I reminded her that she intentionally abandoned her child, but she kept going on about how she was desperate and needed to go to this social arrangement and how she never has time to do anything. I reiterated that be that as it may, she can't just leave Bella with us when we didn't agree to it. Lexi kept bringing up excuses until my husband lost it and told her in no uncertain terms to leave. By this point, Bella was in hysterics and Lexi seemed totally frazzled. This has since turned into a big thing. Lexi has been posting cryptic things on social media about how hard it is to be a mother when people you expect to be there for you won't help you. I've received texts from her saying Bella is devastated to find out that we don't like her and I've now blocked Lexi. My parents have heard about it. And while my mother is firmly on my side, my dad said was it really worth upsetting Bella when she was already there. Matt says that while Lexi was in the wrong, once she had left, we probably should have just kept Bella and argued about it later. Matt also thinks my husband owes Lexi an apology for intimidating her, which I don't think he does. 
not the a hole. I reminded her that she intentionally abandoned her child, but she kept going on about how she was desperate and needed to go to the social arrangement, and how she never has time to do anything. Cry me a river. Every parent has to make sacrifices. This woman dumped her child on your doorstep after you said no to watching her child because she wanted to socialize. It wasn't an emergency. She just didn't want to cancel her plans. The number of parents who don't realize they need to sacrifice things for their kids is pretty shocking. I didn't realize it was as bad as it was until I started following AIDA. Opie's not a hole. Lexi hundred percent abandoned her child. If you were nicer than me, I would have just called the cops. Not the a-hole. You did the right thing calling Lexi to come get her kid. If you had let Bella stay, Lexi would think she could drop off her kid anytime, knowing that you would end up keeping her. No one owes Lexi an apology. It's her fault her Bella got so upset. Not the a-hole. You refused already. And if this social arrangement was so important, then she should have hired a babysitter earlier, rather than leaving her child at someone's place, who clearly stated they aren't okay with babysitting. She had two days to find someone, yet she chose not to, so it is a deliberate choice. Moreover, you did ask her to talk in private, so that the kid won't hear the argument. But since she's the one who didn't listen, I don't see how it is her fault at all.